let's start out by considering a photon that's going to enter into this fish tank. Um, and we want to see what happens to that photon. So we're going to say that the fish tank is going to change the light of the flashlight if a photon that enters the tank and comes out the other side is likely to have been scattered during that time. Um, we don't want too much scattering though, because if there's too much scattering, the whole thing will just be optically thick. The photons will scatter, scatter all around. It won't change the color of the light. Instead, we'll get a big white cloud in there. So we want a photon to come in and get scattered once or a few times on average um, as it goes through uh, the tank. So in other words, we want the optical depth of this tank to be close to one. So let's think about uh, a photon that's coming in, right? It's going through the tank, right? At the speed of light. Here's the, the cross section sigma um, of the photon for uh, scattering with the milk droplet. And we said that these droplets are about the size of the wavelength of the light. That means that it can scatter pretty well and we can have a cross section that is about pi times the you know, size of the milk droplet squared. Um, and we're just gonna say that the size is about equal to uh, the wavelength of light. And the wavelength of um, visible light, I'll just pick a number in there, it's about 500 nanometers, that's equal to 0.5 microns. Okay, now the internet tells me, says the milk, the milk uh, droplets, are sized from something like 0.1 to 15 microns. So this is pretty okay. All right, so we're just gonna take it uh, as being similar in size to visible, the wavelength of visible light. Okay, so we have our cross section. We're moving through here at that speed of light. We have some length that we're gonna go through. This is going to be the length of the fish tank, right? And inside our path through the fish tank, there's going to be some number density, N of milk droplets. Okay. So, as we go through, uh, the total number of expected scatterings, interactions. If you were to go in a straight line, of course, if you get scattered, you get scattered into a different direction, but we're just considering a long, a straight line path, um, is going to be the number density times the cross section times the length uh, through this path, right? And you can see that, right? Because the, the volume of this cylinder, um, so the volume V is just going to be equal to sigma L, and that's what we have here. This is just the number density times the volume through this cylinder. Okay, now you notice here that the cross section, this has to do with the light, uh, the light as well as the milk particles, but the number density and the length they just have to do with the distribution of milk particles. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll define uh, the surface density, n is equal to the integrated number along a path through the system, in this case of milk particles. Um, so this is the number per area of milk particles, milk droplets, along the, um, you know, a, the line uh, of, you know, the photon's motion. So that's, 
that's called the surface density in this direction. And it actually doesn't even have to do with the photon at all. It's just along, you know, uh, a path um, along a direction. Okay, good. So that means that the total number of expected scatterings is also, um, oops, sorry, this is not, oh no, that's right. The number of expected scatterings here is going to be equal to the cross section times the surface density. Okay, so we know that what we want is to have an optical depth of one, remember optical depth is equal to this, this is called the optical depth. We want the optical depth of about one um, to have uh, our photons get affected. And we don't want it to be too big or else we'll just generate a, a cloud that won't make fun colors, it will just scatter everything everywhere to a big white cloud. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if we can estimate that. So we want tau, which is equal to the cross section times the surface density is equal to the cross section times the number density times the length. We want that to be about one. Okay, and we have our estimate for the cross section. So now we need to figure out what to put in for the number density um, and the length there we can just measure. Okay, so the, the amount of milk we add will give us that number density. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this out. So this here, this is whole milk. Whole milk, it's about 3% fat by mass, a little bit more than that. Okay, so if we put in some mass of milk, you know, that we added, that's gonna be, we multiply that by 3%, that's gonna be about the mass of fat droplets that we've got in there. Okay, and so we want the number density though of fat droplets. So the number density is gonna be like the mass of fat droplets divided by the mass of a single fat droplet. So it'll give us the number of fat droplets in here. And then we know how to divide by the volume so times V, uh, and V of course is L times A. So um, when I say L times A, where A is the area of, um, of this fish tank. So let me just draw a picture of the fish tank for a sec to be sure that we have our notation down. Okay, this is the length of the fish tank is here. This is the cross-sectional area of the fish tank. of the tank, okay? And our, our flashlight um, is, is going through, it's gonna shine in this direction. And then we're gonna look at it over here. Okay, so, um, okay, so we're going to, uh, so we got an expression for our number density, but how can we turn that into something that, um, that we can actually estimate? Well, let me uh, come over here. Well, the mass of the fat droplets is what we're gonna put in, the mass of a single fat droplet, and that volume. So here, let's see. I'm gonna leave the, the optical depth equation up there so that we can refer to it. We said that we've got you know, a droplet that has size s here. We said sigma was like pi s squared. Now we wanna know the mass of a droplet. 
going to be like the inter you know four thirds pi s cubed times the internal uh, mass density of that droplet. And um, so now let's let's plug this in and see what we're actually going to have to estimate here. We've got tau is like I'm going to drop these coefficients s squared times the mass of the milk total times 0 0.03, right? So this is mass of the fat, right? And we want that divided by um, the mass of this single droplet as cubed times rho internal. And now we want the volume of the tank, L times A. And now we want to put in our L up here, so L. And check it out, our, the length of our tank canceled up, canceled up, cancels out. It doesn't matter. Um, all we're really going to care about is the area here. And let's come back to that at the end. So now we notice that this size is going to cancel out a little bit. And we're going to have 0.03 times the mass of the milk over the size of the droplet internal density and the area. Okay, and we want that to be one. Okay, so let's do the mass of the milk. It's gonna be about um, what uh, S rho and A over 0 0.03. Okay, S, we said that that was 0.5 microns. Row internal, that's like, you know, the, the density of water, the density of anything solid really is going to be about one gram per centimeter cubed. That's a nice number to have in mind. It's the density of water. You know, solid things might be three grams per centimeter cubed. It's also the average density of the sun. I think that's a coincidence. Um, but we can remember in our minds one gram per centimeter cubed for solid stuff or, or liquid. It's pretty good here. And then the area, all right, then we need to know the area this thing. Um, it looks to me to be about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, so we can double check. Up there, 21 centimeters, and over here we've got 24 centimeters. I'm just going to call it 20 by 20. Okay, 20 centimeters squared. Okay, and so now let's plug this all in, and I'm going to do it in CGS units because that's what astronomers use, centimeters, grams, seconds. Okay, so point, so we've got a, let's move this over here a little bit so that we can actually see it. Um, we've got 0.5 microns, so that's 5 times 10 to the, uh, microns is 10 to the minus 6 meters, that's 10 to the minus four uh, centimeters, but then it's 0.5, so it's five times 10 minus five centimeters times one gram per centimeter cubed times 400 centimeters squared divided by three times 10 to the minus two. And whoops, okay. So let's see, we've got uh, all of our units, uh, except for our grams, cancel out here. So we've got, so we have five times four is 20, so that's two times 10 to the three, times 10 to the minus five, it's like two times 10 to the minus two over three times 10 to the minus two, is like one gram. Okay, so we said the mass of our milk is like one gram, right? And, um, if we need to know uh, how much that is, right? We need to remember that uh, the density, uh, internal density of milk is like one gram per centimeter cubed. So we want like a centimeter cubed of uh, milk. Um, and I think that's also about one milliliter. Right? So one gram per milliliter. Uh, Okay, so we want a milliliter, that's not very much, right? Is that gonna work? 